all right so a very good evening to everyone so i welcome you all uh, to the test and discussion of this central exams so the central exam what we are going to come what we are going to have uh, in the month of june will be aims exam so some of the questions let me discuss related to endocrinology now and uh, yesterday we have discussed some of the questions related to pulmonology and uh, the day before yesterday i have discussed some of the questions related to the cardiology so as a part of the continuous series of this particular test and discussion now let me take up the questions on endocrinology right and before that so i am myself dr rajesh guba i am the general medicine educator on this unacademy platform so if you want to know the notifications of my classes please follow me on unacademy wherein you will get the notifications related to my sessions whenever i conduct okay so as a part of the discussion so this is the first question right so good evening everyone yes ramu good evening so all are true about the condition which is shown except hyperpigmentation hyperkalemia purplish ray metabolic alkalosis so what do you think is the correct answer right so yeah very good so it is yes sk rai yes rai you you have answered uh, correctly so the answer is hyperkalemia so hyperkalemia will not be seen in this particular clinical condition right so that is your c hyperkalemia now okay so what is the diagnosis here first of all can anyone tell me what is the diagnosis just options i have put upside down hyperkalemia is your c and uh, purplish ray is your b option okay yeah what is the diagnosis first of all the diagnosis in this particular patient is right so that is your cushing syndrome okay so in patients with cushings what will happen there will be increase in your corticosteroids okay so now the point what you should understand here is when corticosteroid levels are increased the action they will have similar to that of aldosterone right they have the action similar to that of aldosterone okay now what does this aldosterone do aldosterone what it will do is it will cause sodium and water retention and potassium excretion so potassium levels and as well as h plus ion levels will be decreased so because the potassium levels will be decreased they will not have hyperkalemia what they will have is hypokalemia right what they will have is hypokalemia right and the other very important point is they will have what is called metabolic alkalosis now why do you think they will have metabolic alkalosis that is because your h plus ion is being excreted out and that is the reason why they will have metabolic alkalosis and can anyone explain why there will be hyperpigmentation in patients with the cushing syndrome can anyone tell me why there will be hyperpigmentation in patients with the cushing syndrome so hyperpigmentation is mainly because of increase in the acth levels right very good sagar has answered this so that is because of increase in the acth levels there will be hyperpigmentation in these individuals now you you have two types of cushings one is acth dependent and acth independent type of cushings mainly in case of acth dependent cushings you will have this particular hyperpigmentation so purple stray will be there metabolic alkalosis will be there and hyperpigmentation will be there and the question asked is except so what is that you will not see you will not see hyperkalemia and what you will see is hypokalemia right what you will see is hypokalemia right next we will move on to the next question yeah all are the features of the glucocorticoid deficiency except weight loss fever hyperkalemia postural hypotension all are the features of glucocorticoid deficiency except right so yes sagar you want me to explain right i'll go back to that question sagar just give me one minute right 
so you see glucocorticoid deficiency when you have one clinical condition that is addison's right very good so sagar has answered this question so the answer is hyperkalemia hyperkalemia is the answer and let me tell you glucocorticoid deficiency will cause fever right glucocorticoid deficiency will cause fever okay now why do you think that the glucocorticoid deficiency will cause fever is now if glucocorticoids are there what these glucocorticoids will do glucocorticoids will reduce the interleukin 1 production right and uh, this that is what is being done by your glucocorticoids now what will happen if there is glucocorticoid deficiency there will be increase in your interleukin 1 production and this increase in interleukin 1 is the one which will cause fever in these individuals so what i want to mention you here what i want to mention here is glucocorticoid deficiency will cause fever and glucocorticoid deficiency will also cause weight loss right and glucocorticoid deficiency will also cause the postural hypotension postural hypotension can be seen in patients with a glucocorticoid deficiency but remember hyperkalemia is not seen in patients with a glucocorticoid deficiency so the answer to this particular question is c they can have weight loss they'll have fever and they will also have postural hypotension right and uh, we will move on to the next question now so if there is any doubt please post the doubt i'll answer your doubts right so we will move on to the next question now yeah following are the common features of cushing syndrome except trunkal obesity right trunkal obesity okay so meth okay before going into the further question let me answer meth right so what did i tell you glucocorticoid deficiency will not cause hyperkalemia that is what was the question all are the features of the glucocorticoid deficiency except right so what is the answer hyperkalemia now let me try to give the explanation see glucocorticoid deficiency will not cause hyperkalemia and uh, right and let me explain you why now what this glucocorticoids will do if glucocorticoids are there the glucocorticoids have no effect on potassium glucocorticoids has no effect on potassium but if the glucocorticoids increases like what you will have in patients with the cushings right in when glucocorticoids increases the glucocorticoid will have activity similar to that of aldosterone right and it is this aldosterone which will cause the potassium excretion and causing hypokalemia and causing hypokalemia that is when when the glucocorticoids are above the physiological levels but when glucocorticoids are present in the physiological levels it has no effect on potassium so if there is glucocorticoid deficiency also there is no effect on the potassium so that is the explanation for both meta bed as well as vinus right you have asked me why hyperkalemia should not be there and this is the answer in physiological levels of glucocorticoids or glucocorticoid deficiency there is no effect on the potassium next yes so to this particular question already some of you have answered this question following are the common features of the cushing syndrome except right so trunkal obesity yes it will be there osteoporosis will be there but distal myopathy will not be there in the individuals with the cushing syndrome right so what is that they will have is they will have what is called proximal myopathy right proximal myopathy so can anyone explain why there will be myopathy right why there will be myopathy in an in an individual with the cushing syndrome can anyone explain right so myopathy in patients with the cushing syndrome is because increase in the glucocorticoids they will cause proteolysis right increase in what is the effect of glucocorticoids on the protein metabolism glucocorticoids will cause proteolysis so more and more gluco glucocorticoids more and more proteolysis and that is the reason why the individual will have proximal myopathy right now can anyone explain why there will be osteoporosis in cushing syndrome 
why there will be osteoporosis in Cushing syndrome. Right, now let me explain you the concept. What the glucocorticoids will do is, right, what the glucocorticoids will do is, glucocorticoids will stimulate the osteoclastic activity. Right, will stimulate the osteoclastic activity. Right, so because and in patients with the Cushing syndrome, what will happen? More and more glucocorticoids, more and more osteoclastic activity, and that is the reason why you will have what is called osteoporosis. And what these glucocorticoids will do? Glucocorticoids will increase the hepatic gluconeogenesis, and that is the reason why in patients with the Cushing syndrome, you have glucose intolerance. Right, you have glucose intolerance. Okay, so. The answer to this particular question is distal myopathy will not be there, proximal myopathy will be there in these patients. Next, we will move on to the next question. Yeah, this is another very, very important question. Causes of diffuse hyperpigmentation include all of the following except Busulfan administration, Nelson syndrome, Addison's disease, Hermansky Pudlak syndrome. Causes of diffuse hyperpigmentation include the following except. Right, very good, Dr. Siddhi. Siddhi has answered this, very good. So the answer is Hermansi Pudlak syndrome. In case of Busulfan administration, there will be diffuse hyperpigmentation. Right, diffuse hyperpigmentation, okay. Now, whereas in Nelson syndrome, what is this Nelson syndrome? This particular Nelson syndrome is mainly because of bilateral adrenalectomy. So, whenever you do a bilateral adrenalectomy, what will happen to your ACTH levels? ACTH levels increase. Right? When ACTH level increases, parallelly, MSH levels also increases. So, when MSH levels increases, and that will result in what is called hyperpigmentation. Right? That will result in what is called hyperpigmentation. Okay? So, Nelson syndrome, it will occur secondary to bilateral adrenalectomy, where it will there is increase in your ACTH levels. And whenever the ACTH is released, along with ACTH from the anterior pituitary, MSH is also released. And that will result in hyperpigmentation. Now you take in case of Addison's. In Addison's, what will happen to the ACTH levels? In Addison's, right, let me tell you that in Addison's, there will be increase in your ACTH levels. Right, there will be increase in your ACTH levels. Okay, so when the ACTH level increases in Addison's, what will happen? The MSH level also increases. So when the MSH levels increases, that will result in what is called hyperpigmentation. Right, that will result in what is called hyperpigmentation. Now this Hermansky Pudlak syndrome, it is a genetic disorder where you have albinism. So, in Hermansi Pudlak syndrome, what you will have is hypopigmentation but not hyperpigmentation. Okay, so this is a very, very important point that you should understand. Right? Next, we will move on to the next question. Yes, Addison's disease is characterized by all except hyperglycemia, hypotension, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia. So, what is that you will not see in patients with the Addison's disease? Yes, who will answer this question? Right, so very good. So Sparsh Das has answered this question, very good. Uh, no, Das has answered this question and Harshita has answered, both of you, very good. So the answer is, the answer is hyperglycemia will not be there. Now what is your Addison's disease? Addison's is decreasing your glucocorticoids, right? Decrease in your mineral low corticoids and decrease in your weak sex hormones, okay? So when the glucocorticoid levels are reduced, what will happen to the glucose levels? The glucose levels are also reduced. The glucose levels are also reduced. Why? Because glucocorticoids are the one which will cause hepatic gluconeogenesis. And if glucocorticoids are not there, hepatic gluconeogenesis does not occur and that will result in hypoglycemia. So in patients with Addison's, what they will have is they will have hypoglycemia. Right? They'll have what is called hypoglycemia, but not hyperglycemia. Now, hypotension will not will be there. Why? Because mineralocorticoid deficiency. 
Mineralocorticoids are the one which will maintain the blood pressure. And if mineralocorticoids are not there, the blood pressure will reduce. Then coming to hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia will also be there in patients with Addison's. Why? Because once the mineralocorticoids are not there, potassium excretion does not occur. It is the mineralocorticoids which will cause potassium excretion and sodium and water retention. And mineralocorticoids are not there, so potassium excretion does not occur and that will result in hyperkalemia. And hyponatremia is again because of the mineralocorticoid deficiency. Mineralocorticoids are the one which will cause sodium retention and mineralocorticoids are not there, so they will have hyponatremia. So, the answer to this particular question is hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia will not be there in patients with the Addison's disease, right? So, that is one of the very, very important point, right? Yeah, what is the most common cause of the Cushing syndrome? Pituitary adenoma, ectopic ACTH, adrenal adenoma, iatrogenic steroids. So, what do you think is the most common cause? Right, Venkat Nikhil, very good. Everyone is answering this. I appreciate everyone. So, the answer is the iatrogenic steroids. Now, if the question is asked, what is the most common cause of the Cushing syndrome? Then the answer will be iatrogenic. Right, the answer will be iatrogenic. But if the same thing, if the question is asked, what is the most common cause of ACTH dependent type of Cushing's? Can anyone answer? What is the most common cause of ACTH dependent Cushing's? Anyone? Right. Yes, very good. The most common cause of ACTH dependent Cushing's, the answer will be corticotroph type of pituitary adenoma. Right? Corticotroph type of pituitary adenoma. Right? Next, if the question is asked, what is the most common cause of non iatrogenic Cushing's? What will be your answer? Most common cause of non iatrogenic Cushing's. What is the answer? Yes. Again, the answer will be the same thing. Most common cause of non iatrogenic Cushing's. Again, the answer is same. That is pituitary adenoma. Right? It is not ectopic. It is your pituitary adenoma. Most common cause of non iatrogenic Cushing's will be the pituitary adenoma, which is nothing but your corticotroph type of pituitary adenoma. Right? Okay. Now we will move on to the next question. Right. This is one of the very, very important question. Investigation to be performed in a patient with hypertension and hypokalemia. Renin aldosterone ratio, ACTA stimulation test, 24 hour urinary catecholamines, and then Octrio scan. Investigation to be performed in a patient with hypertension and hypokalemia. Right, very good. Yeah, Sunita Man has answered first, and then Harshita and Mehta, all of you have answered. Very good. So the answer is renin aldosterone ratio is the answer. Okay, it is not your the no some of, yes Sagar you have answered 24 hour urinary catecholamines that is not the answer. Okay, right. Can anyone answer now? What is the diagnosis here? Hypertension with hypokalemia. What is the diagnosis? Hmm. Yes. Who will tell me the diagnosis? Right. So, diagnosis in this scenario is, very good Harshita, diagnosis in this scenario is the Kahn syndrome. Okay. So, in Kahn syndrome, what is Kahn syndrome? It is a condition which is characterized by increase in the aldosterone levels. Right, increase in the aldosterone levels. Okay, now I'll ask you one more question. Whoever has answered that it is a Kahn syndrome, tell me in Kahn syndrome what will happen to renin levels. Tell me in Kahn syndrome what will happen to the renin levels. Yes, who will answer me this first? Right, very good Mahita. So, in the Kahn syndrome, the renin levels will be reduced. And if you take the renin aldosterone ratio, right? So, what will happen to your renin aldosterone ratio? Actually, it is not renin aldosterone ratio, it is aldosterone renin ratio. Okay, so aldosterone renin ratio will be increased in patients with the Kahn syndrome. So, answer to this particular question no. 
if it is renin aldosterone ratio then it will be decreased but if it is aldosterone renin ratio it will be increased so what we calculate is aldosterone renin ratio is the one which we calculate okay and you take acda stimulation test where do we do this acda stimulation test acda stimulation test we do this in patients with the addison's disease right we do this in patients with the addison's disease okay then you take the 24 hour urinary catecholamine levels what is the condition where you do this 24 hour urinary catecholamine levels yeah yes avinash your acda stimulation test is nothing but your cosyntopin test and what is it? where do we do this 24 hour urinary catecholamine test very good so we do this in pheochromocytoma now where do we do this octreo scan where do we do this octreo scan right very good very good harshita so for location of carcinoid tumor right for location of the carcinoid tumor we do this particular octreo scan so investigation to be performed in a patient with hypertension and hypokalemia the diagnosis is the con syndrome and the diagnosis uh, the investigation what we need to do is aldosterone renin ratio right next yeah answer this question acth dependent cushing syndrome is caused by just now actually we have discussed the same question right acth dependent cushing syndrome is caused by right so answer to this particular question here is yeah so the answer is the pituitary adenoma right now you should know what are all the conditions where you have ectopic acdh production can anyone answer this what are the conditions where you have ectopic acdh production conditions where there is ectopic acdh production yes i am waiting for the answers right very good so that is your small cell carcinoma of the lung next then what about other? then next bronchial and bronchial and pancreatic carcinoids right bronchial and pancreatic carcinoids then medullary carcinoma of thyroid very good vasavi right medullary carcinoma of thyroid next one more the other one is pheochromocytoma hmm? the other one is pheochromocytoma so these are all your ectopic sources of acdh production small cell carcinoma of the lung bronchial and pancreatic carcinoid medullary carcinoma of thyroid and as well as pheochromocytoma so in all these conditions even your ectopic acdh production also this also comes under your acdh dependent type of cushions right this also comes under your acdh dependent type of cushions okay right now we will move on to the next question yeah this is a very easy question i don't want to discuss this yeah all are seen in addison's disease except hyponatremia hyperkalemia hypotension metabolic alkalosis what is that you will not see right so very good you what you will not see is you will not see metabolic alkalosis right so in addison's disease what is that you will see is you will see metabolic acidosis right you will see what is called metabolic acidosis okay in patients with the addison's disease but it is not your metabolic alkalosis and the remaining all you will see in patients with the addison's disease and why hyponatremia hyponatremia is because of aldosterone deficiency why hypokalemia again the same reason due to aldosterone deficiency and why hypotension hypotension also same reason that is due to aldosterone deficiency right okay now we will move on to the next question yeah this is another very very important question congenital adrenal hyperplasia due to 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency presents with all except metabolic acidosis hypokalemia virilization hypertension
Yes. Right. So in case of 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, right. In case of 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, now you see what all will happen. The, there will be corticosteroid deficiency. Right, there will be corticosteroid deficiency, there will be increase in your aldosterone levels, and there will be increase in your weak sex hormone levels. Right, whereas in females, there will be also increase in your testosterone levels also. Now, now when aldosterone levels are increased, what is that you will have? You will have metabolic alkalosis. When aldosterone levels are increased, you will have metabolic alkalosis. And what is that you will not have in this patient now? You will not have metabolic acidosis. Right? You will not have metabolic acidosis. The remaining all you will have. Why you will have hypokalemia? That is because of increase in your aldosterone levels. Now, why do you have hypertension? That is again because of increase in your hyperaldosterone levels. Now, why is there virilization? That is because of increase in the weak sex hormone levels. Right? So, the answer to this particular question is metabolic alkalosis. Acidosis will not be there. What there will be in 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency is metabolic alkalosis. Okay? Now, what is the reason? This is the right? This is the uh, hormonal levels in 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. Corticosteroid levels will be reduced, aldosterone levels will be increased, and weak sex hormone levels also will be increased in patients with 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. And that is the reason why you will have metabolic alkalosis but not metabolic acidosis. So, this is a very, very important point that you should understand regarding your 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency in congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Right. Yeah, this is another very important question. Which of the following is not seen in secondary adrenal insufficiency? Hyperpigmentation, postural hypotension, hypoglycemia, lassitude. Right, very good. So, answer is pigmentation will not be there. Right? Pigmentation will not be there. Why? Because in case of secondary adrenal insufficiency, Right. In case of secondary adrenal insufficiency, what will happen to your ACTH levels? ACTH levels will be reduced. So, when ACTH levels are reduced, the MSH levels are also reduced. So, when MSH levels are reduced, that will result in hypopigmentation but not hyperpigmentation. Right. Secondary adrenal insufficiency means the problem is in the pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary. The ACTH levels are reduced. So, when ACTH levels are reduced, the MSH levels also get reduced. And when MSH levels are reduced, and that right. So. Right. So, this is for the today's session. There is also a power cut here, right? And uh, we will wind up this session. So, in the today's session, what I have discussed is the test and discussion related to your endocrinology. And tomorrow, I will I'll be coming up with the test and discussion on the other very important topic in the general medicine at the same time that is 5.30. So, all of you please attend it 5.30 session tomorrow for having a very good test and discussion related to your central exams. So thank you very much and see you again tomorrow at 5.30.